Hi, welcome to the Policy Circles training on LinkedIn. I am so excited about this because we are going to learn to build our personal brand and how to better leverage LinkedIn. And Policy Circle women are change agents. So we should be utilizing this platform to make an impact in our industry and in our um you know, industry and to connect with other people. So before we start, we are actually going to pop up a uh, poll for you to take. Um, it's going to ask you if um, you have a LinkedIn account and if you utilize it. So be honest because we're here to get better today. And uh, before we start the training, we will, um, uh, after the training, we are going to have Q&A, but during the training, go ahead and pop questions that you have in the chat so that we um, can get to all the questions. If we don't get to them, we want to be able to do a follow-up with you. And then after the program, fabulous Nicole Klein is going to get on and give us some calls to action. And because ladies, we know that knowledge is power, but only if it's put into action. So without further ado, I wanna get right to it so that we can get trained. And I would like to introduce you to our LinkedIn trainer. Um, Christina Maruna. Welcome, Christina. Thank you for being here. How are Thank you? you? Thank you for having me. I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? I'm, I'm wonderful. And I just want to say right out of the gate, you have been a joy to work with and your smile is infectious. So ah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're so happy to have you here. So first, tell everybody what your title is at LinkedIn. Yes. So I am an account executive on our government and advocacy team. So work with um, a lot of government contractors as well as some economic development and helping them uh, leverage the platform and use it to achieve their business initiatives. That's awesome. And you've been doing these trainings across the US. Who do you do them for? Yes, so we do them for a lot of clients. So a lot of economic development organizations, defense contractors, as well as um, a lot of you know volunteer ones. So I've done them for Dress for Success, which is a great women's organization, as well as um, done some for Georgetown, where I got my MBA. So a little alumni training. Awesome, nice little plug there. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Christina, we are so excited to get started. So um, infuse us with knowledge so we can get better. And I'm just going to give you the platform and train away. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so just for everyone, we will send out this deck after. So if you feel like you missed something, do not worry. We'll send everything out. Um, so you don't have to be like scrupulously taking notes or anything. Um, so I will share my screen. All right, are you guys able to see the normal view, not the notes view? Yes, good. Um, all right, we will get started. So just a brief overview of what we're gonna cover. So starting off with, you know, what is LinkedIn about, as well as, you know, why it differs from some of the other platforms, how to build out your profile and get, you know, thinking about what you post and how you set yourself up for success and then going beyond the profile to networking and really leveraging the platform to achieve your goals. So starting off, you know, we just like love sharing this. So our um, vision is to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. And it's just, you know, we always just like to share this because I think it's so unique and it really is, I feel like one of the few platforms where you really can create economic opportunity for everyone. And that is followed by our mission, which is to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. And as we jump into the training, I will explain how you can, you know, actually be more productive and successful on LinkedIn, and I think you will really see the mission come to life. So now, what makes, you know, why should you be using LinkedIn? It was great to see that no one said no in the poll, that they don't have a LinkedIn profile, but I saw we did have a lot of people say yes, but they rarely, rarely use it. So why should you be using LinkedIn? So here's just like a brief overview of you know, what's happening on the platform. We're gaining a new member every three seconds. So we are rapidly growing 
I feel like, you know, from when I started last year, this number of our number of members has gone significantly up. And so not only are we growing in members, but we're also growing in companies and, you know, schools and things like that. So people are active and on the platform daily. And then this is always one of my favorite slides because, you know, we're inundated with different types of social media. So what makes LinkedIn different? So, you know, of course, Facebook, Twitter, you're kind of going to be more entertained, maybe to catch up with friends or learn some news. Whereas LinkedIn, if you look at it, it's really improved my career, learn from leaders and experts, search for new opportunities. And that's, you know, what we see on the platform. People come here, they're purposeful. Um, they want to learn. They're not just scrolling aimlessly. They, you know, want to find out how they can, you know, learn skills or read articles or connect with people to help them um, grow in their career um, and achieve things that, you know, maybe they wouldn't be if they hadn't connected with people. And then kind of diving more into that. So because of the way of like people wanting to learn on the platform, we kind of sit in between a social network and then some of these publications because, you know, we are sharing, people are sharing articles. We do, you know, have trust and safety is very important to us. And so you're not getting a lot of, you know, fake news or, you know, bots or things like that. Um, it's very much, you know, you can come here and get reliable news, but then we also have the social media aspect where people can comment and engage and share with people in their network, you know, articles that they feel like might be useful to them or build thought leadership. So it's the best of both worlds, which again, is just one of the reasons we're a bit unique. So now the main part of, you know, how to build your profile, what it is and how you can set yourself up for success. So first, I mean, just again, diving into like who's on the platform, we have, you know, over 8 million CEOs. They are active on the platform, engaging and really sharing, you know, everything from thought leadership pieces to things their businesses are doing to kind of those behind the scenes photos to help you learn a little bit more about, you know, their personalities and create that personal connection. And then, so this is something I feel like I ask all the time, is my LinkedIn profile my um, resume? And the answer is no, do <laughs> not put what you would put on a resume. Your profile is consistently evolving. So, you know, everything from, you know, your employment history, you know, add, adding different things about what you're doing currently is really important. Um, adding skills you're gaining in your profession, as well as commenting, you know, being active and engaged with other people. All of these things are not things you find on a resume. So really thinking through how LinkedIn is, you know, your profile should be like continuously evolving as you grow in your, you know, professional identity and not something that you would read in two seconds on a piece of paper like a resume. So here we just have, you know, a quick breakdown of the profile and things you should do to set things up. Um, as I said, we are going to send this out after since I know this is a lot of information, but, you know, quick things to note. So making sure you have a photo that first is just you, nothing like, you know, maybe on some of the other networks, you want a professional photo of you. Um, make sure you have that. We see that profiles that have photos end up getting, you know, 21 times more profile views. So it does have an impact because people can kind of create that, oh, personal connection, they see you. Um, you know, making sure you have your location, that's also really important, especially in terms of like searches, which we'll get into a little later. Doing your summary, this is a great, like this is like your elevator pitch. So, you know, showing, you know, not only what your experience is, but also, you know, why are you here? Like, what do you have to offer? Are you looking for to make new connections? Are you skilled in a certain area where you can provide, you know, insight into that to help others learn? These are all great things to include in your about section. Make it, you know, relative, 
relatively short. You don't want to write multiple paragraphs, but just something quick and get allows people to get to know you quick. Then putting in your experience. So this is where I was saying a little different than the resume. So, you know, we see people add short summaries of what they do or, you know, current projects they're working on. And then enhancing that by adding media, which is, you know, I think such a great feature you can add where you can actually put, you know, article links of things you've done in this job or videos of any interviews you've done, maybe media interviews, things like that. So keep it active and live because, you know, people are very visual. And so having those visual assets is a great way to help them learn a little bit more about what you do. Next up, education, great way for, you know, networking with people who went to your, you know, university, put any certificates, any schooling you have. And actually then, you know, if you click on the school and if you have it listed on your profile, there's an alumni section. So you'll actually be able to see other alums that, you know, went to your school, which as I said, is great for networking. Endorsements. So these, um, you know, are on the bottom of your profile and you can actually ask team members or people you've done volunteer stuff with, things like that to endorse you for certain skills. And you can pick the skills that you want to like be highlighted on your profile. So it's a great way to kind of, you know, set your brand based on what skills you want it to be featured. And then asking those people who know you best um, or have worked with you on certain things to endorse you for it. And then similarly getting recommendations again from those people that you've worked with to help people get a better sense of who you are and also some of the projects you've worked on. And then finally, um, interests, we'll get into this a little later too, but following people that you know are in your industry or inspire you are great ways to learn from others as well. And then not on here, we also have a section for volunteer experience. So definitely recommend including any type of volunteer work you do as well. So now this thought leadership is something that we're seeing grow quite a bit on LinkedIn. As I mentioned, we have a ton of CEOs on the platform, a ton of executives that are really leveraging the platform to get their voice out. So we're gonna kind of dive in of how you can best do that. So first, just a quick overview. So we have two ways you can share posts. So we have an update, which is the stuff you're gonna see in your feed. You do it right from your homepage. There are posts with photos or videos or those short form posts, kind of more like a post on maybe like a Facebook or a Instagram, not in terms of content, but and thinking through how, what they look like. Publishing our longer form articles that, you know, and I'll, I'll show you examples, but they're gonna be more in depth, um, really, you know, think of it kind of like an op-ed type thing where you're sharing more detail on an issue or, you know, some type of topic. So a little bit different, both are great. You're probably going to do updates more frequently than publishing just because it does, publishing does require a bit more, but recommend adding both to your mix if possible. So what kind of updates should you share? So thank you to your board member, Laura, who allows us to use examples for her post. So she does a great job of combining video and images and really sharing what she's doing with her podcast um, creates a great example of like personalization. Um, so definitely encourage you to consider a post like this where you're showing your face, people get to know you and they can see your passion for not only your passion, but your expertise on certain subject matters. Um, another example, the images, you know, don't have images with a bunch of text make it stand out in the feed. You know, I said people aren't scrolling the platform, but they're still, when they're going through their feed, they are slowly going through it. And a post like this, where it's very eye-catching with words, um, helps you see, oh, like, what is she talking about? And um, read 
read more into it and click on the link. So visual, I say always works better than just text posts. Text posts are fine if you don't have the visual, but you know, when people are looking, we see the visual stand out more. So if you can add media content, definitely encourage you to do that. And then also, you know, you can add some hashtags as well to certain posts. Um, like Sally Crouchek, she makes sure this is her company's one, but you can actually search for hashtags to see which ones are most popular, or, you know, relevant to what you're, what you're sharing. So if you were sharing something about, you know, technology, you could search the hashtag technology and see how many followers it has. And that'll help you get a little lift on your posts as well. And then, you know, of course, we all love data. So seeing how your posts perform, you can go to your, um, on your profile, you click your activity and then see all, and you'll be able to see the number of people who have liked it, the number of people who have commented and shared. It's a great way to get a sense of what performed better with your audience. You know, maybe your videos have way more engagement than your images, that's a sign to maybe be sharing more videos. And, you know, videos do not have to be highly produced. Also, you can do it with your phone. Authenticity, I feel like always does better than, you know, sometimes too super produced, but, you know, people want to see you, they want to feel like they know you. So yeah, definitely keep track of your activity. It'll really help you kind of grow how your content, um, the types of content you're doing and seeing how others react to it. So a few best practices that you know we had gone over before, being authentic. Um, also, in terms of frequently, I feel like this is get asked a lot too. Try to aim for a few times a week if you can. Um, I know it's hard at first to maybe start with like once a week, but to really start getting engagement and getting your voice out there, a few times a week is going to be best to, so people see your different posts. Um, if you can't, you know, you could always comment on other people's posts, you know, maybe you share one post and then comment on some other people's posts just to, you know, be active on the platform, kind of make it part of your daily routine. And then, you know, similarly, if you are commenting on other people's posts, that's an opportunity for other people to come back and then comment on your post. So being engaged all around is definitely key. So now publishing. So this is, as I said, the more in-depth type of posting. So again, Laura, um, this great job with publishing. So these look more like an article. You can have blog posts or, or blog quotes, pardon. Um, you can have images, videos embedded in them. You can still actually tag people in them though, which is, which is great. Um, to you know, get some recognition um, kind of makes it more fun than like an, a typical op-ed. But you know, when you're thinking through these, think through something that's going to really help people learn because you know you're asking them to invest more time by reading a longer post. So a few ways to get your um, longer articles out in front of the public and get people to engage is to first create a headline that captures. This I think is the most important of. You know, people come to the platform and they're curious, they want to learn. So I feel like this with like a listicle, it's a great way for people to be like, oh, I wonder what this is. It's easy, it's digestible, um, and it causes people to want to click more and see what see what this actually is. Um, similarly, you are able to have a banner image here. Um, so making this something that's relevant to the article, but also Again, it's going to spark an interest if someone's scrolling through their feed, sees this longer form post. What is it? Um, you know, wanting wanting them to click on it. Um, so find an image that really captures what your article is saying in a visual way. And then again, the authenticity. You know, make it your own. Again, you're trying to build thought leadership. So you know, having it in your authentic voice so people want to keep coming back to you as a trusted source is key. Making it, you know, clear that 
you are an expert in this area and here's what you have to offer. And, you know, thinking about who your, who your network is, which that's where we'll kind of go into how you build your network, but thinking about who's likely going to read this and what's going to interest them to click on it. And, you know, like I said, these are longer form, but, you know, keep it a relative, you know, I would say probably five paragraphs, six paragraphs, nothing super long. It's not a dissertation or anything like that. Still make it, you know, it's still a social platform, make it digestible. And then the nice thing about publishing is you do get um, some additional insights that you don't get on a regular post. So you're able to see, you know, what companies people came from, what their job titles are, as well as the area. And so when you combine that with what you're seeing on your posts, it's a great way to really get a picture of who your network is and the types of people that are engaging with your content. And now we will jump through how to network, which I feel like is always one of the more fun things about the platform. Um, so, you know, first we had talked about the advanced search. I feel like this is kind of like an unknown feature that a lot of people don't realize. So we have a ton of ways you can search. So you can search by someone's industry, location, their company, things like that. So if you're looking at, oh, I need a speaker for something, or I want to connect with someone who works in software in San Francisco for maybe a business opportunity, you can actually search, see the companies, see the people, and you know, see if you're their a second degree connection, third degree, things like that. So it's a great way to really not only like expand your network, but also find new opportunities with people who have things in common with you or could potentially be helpful to, you know, your growth or your business. Um, and then, you know, next, of course, building relationships. So that's where we kind of come in with this social platform area is, you know, go on the platform to get connections, but also making sure these connections are people that you can engage with and, you know, build a relationship with. So definitely anyone that you've met in person or virtually at events, you know, feel free to request me, um, send them invitations, you know, maybe if it's an event where you, there were a lot of people, send a note, like great meeting you at the policy circle event. Um, it's a great way to stay in touch so that should something come up in the future, you're already connected and there's that um, memory of how you guys met. For those that you haven't met, but you're still actually interested in what they have to say, you can actually follow them as opposed to just sending them a connection, which, you know, I know some people feel, some people are fine with sending, uh, you know, people they haven't met connections and that is fine. We definitely recommend including some type of note if you're doing that. But if you're not comfortable, you can actually still follow them by clicking this more button on their profile and then um, clicking follow. So it's a great way to you know, learn from someone that you might not know, but has interesting things to say, um, but not having to take that step of actually connecting with them. Um, so yeah, so definitely recommend that as you're thinking through expanding your network. And so then here's where we were talking about, um, you know, building from your second connection. So this just looked at the policy circle employees. So I can see, oh, okay, I have all these second connections here. So a second connection is a connection of a first degree connection that you already have. So here I could, you know, ask Mary to introduce me to one of these people that I am a second degree connection with. So it's a great way to use your current network to expand and definitely recommend it. I feel like people are always, you know, willing to make introductions, um, you know, and, and help um, bridge those gaps. And because it's so easy to do on LinkedIn through messaging, um, it's a very light lift. And of course, as I'm sure you're aware that having an introduction from someone that already knows the person 
tends to result in a conversation as opposed to just maybe a, a cold call. And then, um, so we talked about like, you know, ways that you know, not only sharing your posts, but actually engaging with your audience. Don't make the conversation one-sided. You know, it is still a social network. So engaging is key. So instead of just you know, posting stuff, as you go through your feed, like, like different things or share um, other people's posts that you, you, know, you think that your network might like. Comment on posts as well. And you can tag people in your comments that can you know, expand the conversation even further. You know, potentially the authors could respond. It's a great way to get your name out there even further. Um, highly recommend doing this, you know, as frequently as you as you'd like. This is where going back to kind of making LinkedIn part of your daily routine, you know, just going through the feed, seeing something that's of interest, and maybe adding a comment or tagging someone post, you know, say, oh, this is related to you know, this initiative that you were doing thought you'd be interested or something like that. It's a great way to uh, really, you know, just be active and not have a ton of effort like doing a full post. Um, and then also, you know, share tagging, um, recognizing others, any post that you can do where you tag someone else or a company that's going to increase visibility because it's going to go, they're going to be able to see it. They might want to share with their followers, things like that. So highly recommend tagging and posts and comments um, just to help amplify and again, expand out beyond your network. And like we talked about earlier too, it's that reciprocity of if you're tagging someone else, they might want to then share a post later on that features you or engage with your stuff, your um, uh, you know, posts and articles as well. And then, you know, here is just, you know, a brief overview of our most popular topics. So not surprisingly, technology, you know, finance, management, careers. So yes, these are our most popular topics, but going back to thinking about who your network is, if you are not in one of these <laughs> industries, and don't really work in these, don't feel like you have to share, oh, these are the things people are talking about on LinkedIn. Think about who your network is and share content that's going to be not only relevant, but interesting to them. And, um, you know, learn from those, uh, the analytics that we talked about a little bit earlier to figure out how you can continuously improve it. And, you know, search the hashtags, things like that to find others you know, types of topics that others are engaging on. And I think, you know, that's the best way to kind of expand your reach. But if you are in one of these industries, of course, that is great to share stuff on them as well. And then finding, you know, your company page is a great place as well. Um, you know, we see that companies that have employees that are inactive it lifts their page and then it also you know creates more employee engagement so share stuff that is happening on your company's page to help get the word out tag your company as well you know let people know what certain initiatives you're working on things like that um, and just really you know help not only build your brand but you know you know, hopefully you love what you do and sharing, you know, that from your company is also exciting and definitely will help uh, build out some of your company's uh, engagement on your company posts as well. And then finally, we also have groups. And now as of last spring, we have events. So groups are a great way um, to connect with people with like uh, similar interests. So that would be, you know, if you are into, you know, policy, there's definitely some policy public affairs groups that are great to join. Events are also a very exciting new addition. So with events, you can actually, you know, join live virtual events, which, which is great in and of itself. But then you also have that networking feature within the event, which has been very useful. <laughs> 
the times of the pandemic where you can't network in person. So there's a feed where you can comment, you can share what you liked about the event, you can um, you know, engage with other people that intend, attend it. So definitely recommend looking for events. They are in, if you click um, like the My Network feed on your profile, they'll show some upcoming events and you know attend a few uh, learn from other you know, learn from others you know reach out to people that also attended the event and then also you know share with your network if you are hosting or attending an event that you think is you know helpful and that people from your network would benefit from definitely share that you know join me at this event and help get the word out there The next, um, you know, when we first had gone through, you know, the different parts of the profile, uh, and you know, I mentioned that you know, you you can have interest and follow companies and influencers. So definitely follow any companies that are either of interest to you for you know, potential business reasons. Maybe you want to work there at some point, or they just are doing things that inspire you. This will enable you to see their posts, get an idea of what they are doing. Um, and it's just a great way to, you know, learn about the many things some of these companies are doing. And then also follow influencers. So influencers have this little blue mark on them and they, you know, are people that we see that are sharing great content on the platform, really inspiring thought leadership. So, you know, think about who inspires you and definitely encourage you to follow some of these. We have tons of CEOs, founders of companies, people on boards. Um, it, it's amazing the number of influencers we have, and I'm always learning something from the people I follow. And then finally, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, trust and safety is very important to us, as well as your privacy. So you have full control of that. You can choose in your privacy settings how you're visible on the platform, who can send you requests, uh, who sees your posts, things like that. I will recommend, um, you know, if you are comfortable to have uh, your profile visible on search engines, because then when someone Google, Googles you, they will be able, your profile typically is going to be one of the first things to come up. So if you have that setting to be visible on search engines, you know, you kind of have a control over what people see first about you. So definitely recommend that. But if you're not comfortable with, with having your profile appear in the search engine, you, you can turn it off as well. And then similarly, like any post on your feed that you, you know, don't want to see, you can always hide it or unfollow a company. And then we also, you know, ask people if they see anything that is unprofessional or, you know, doesn't adhere with our, you know, pol uh, platform standards um, in terms of, you know, making sure information is accurate to, of course, report that because we want to make sure everyone is having a good experience on the platform. And with that, um, just a quick summary of things you guys can do going forward, um, you know, kind of action steps is, you know, just make sure your profile is filled out. We, you know, again, we'll send this out. Uh, try to join a group or event, you know, see what's out there and start engaging with people. Develop your regular posting cadence. Um, and then along with that, commenting on other people's posts, as well as some of those organizations posts that you start following. Um, and then tag people as well as you are thinking through your posting and, you know, use some of those hashtags that you've searched for that you see are, um, you know, relevant to what you're posting and interesting. And you will be set up for success. And with that, we will take questions. I know we went through this so fast. There's a lot of information, um, but again, we'll send it out. You, you did great, Christina. And I... I was just like so many things. I was like, I didn't know that was there. I didn't know that was available. So thank you so much. And yes, we're going to open it up for questions. So we've got 10 in the chat already, but um, Maddie's going to look to see if anybody has their hand raised. So you can use the ra raise hand feature at the bottom. And then Maddie will call people out. Is there anybody, Maddie, that has their hand raised? 
So we have a lot of people who have popped up questions in the chat. So I think I'm just going to call it a couple and Christina, you can take the floor. So I love this question from Jacqueline of she said, I'm reti retired out of the workforce, but do a lot of volunteering and philanthropy and I'm on several boards. I haven't updated my account in years that people keep reaching out to me. What are the advantages to me of having a current LinkedIn account as a free market believer? Do you mention that in your profile? profile or connect with people through topics or events? So that is a great question. Thank you. So definitely, you know, being retired, it is still great to use the platform. Honestly, my mom is retired. She's like a more active user than I am, to be totally honest. Um, so it's a great way to, like you said, list your board, um, the boards that you're on, as well as connect with people on those boards and really share your expertise. Like you are on these boards for a reason. So what are you offering, you know, why, what is the expertise that they saw in you that you can share with your network? So building that kind of thought leadership is a great uh, way to connect. And I think, you know, engaging with people that are at the companies you're on the board with, um, people that you're doing volunteer work with, congratulating people, commenting, all that stuff is super useful. And it's a way for you to engage and for people to also learn from you, from your experience. Yeah, that's great. And we've got, Sandy actually has her hand raised. So I'm gonna open up the mic to you, Sandy. So you can ask Christina your question directly. Let's see, oh. we'll get her to unmute. Here we go. Did Andy, you get your me? microphone? There you go. There you go. Um, I'm with the River North um, uh, co-leader co policy circle. I have two questions. Um, I haven't been very active, so I'm really, thank you very much for this. I think I'll become more active, but I've noticed two things over time that seem to happen. One is that I will get a, used to get a picture of someone that wants to connect, okay? And it would say who I had in common with them. And I don't get that anymore. Okay, that's one. Number two, sometimes there's a search and it says um, so many uh, companies searched you or whatever. And um, then it also says underneath that maybe there's two and then there's like six that want to be private. So could you explain that? Because that kind of the privacy thing and them searching doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And I seem to get a lot of those. And also the connect situation where you could see the person that actually you had in common. And I don't see any more. So in terms of the connections where you might not be able to see, these could be people that you just don't have connections with. So if it says a second degree connection, you should be able to see who those people are unless they've had in their set, they've changed in their settings that they don't want people to be able to see who's in their network. Um, and unfortunately, there's just nothing that can be done about that because if someone chooses that they don't want people to see who's in their network, that's their uh, you know privacy setting and it's their choice. I think that's more of a rarity. So you know maybe you've just had a few people who have have recently done that, but you know usually people are okay with people seeing in their network. Um, but knowing that if it's a second, you do have some type of connection with them. If it's a third, you would not see any connections. Um, in terms of uh, the private profile. So again, it's a privacy setting. So we allow people to either show when they've looked at someone's profile with their full name and job title and picture, or they can just have you know where they work and no picture, or they can choose to be completely in incognito and not share any of that information. So those are the people where you're seeing that might have searched you, but their profiles are private. And again, since it's a privacy setting, we, you know, it's not something that even with premium that you could see. It's just, you know, making sure that people on the platform feel safe and uh, that if that's what they've chosen, that, you know, we, we're not sharing that information with anyone. So surely there's no way to kind of get around that. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think that was great. I think let's go ahead and do two more questions. We actually have one more person, Teresa, who has her hand raised. So I'm gonna allow you to talk 
and you should be asked to unmute it so you can take it away. Yeah, um, I have been volunteering for about the last year for a pro-life organization and also and with the DAR. So these are some other organizations that, you know, I do have connections with and it's hypersensitive what seems to be culture we're in, I just would like to get some tips about how to indicate those are some of my, you know, passions and interests. And I'll, I will mute and then you can answer. Yeah, so I think um, DAR, I mean, I know some of my friends that are active in it, they list that as a volunteer opportunity on their profile. I think in terms of the pro-life organization, I mean, if you're comfortable putting it on your profile i think it's again a great thing to put in your volunteer um you you could maybe if you don't want it out publicly you could have it only shared with you can change your settings so that it's only shared with your first degree connections if that makes you feel a little more confident in it um again as i, I said like you know part of our you know, platform of what stands out is like we do expect people to be respectful to each other so you don't get some of that negative back and forth that you might see on other platforms it's you know more of a higher level engaged conversation to be honest i uh worked in politics prior to my job and handled our social media and i will say for my boss's post that i did on linkedin the comments were much more respectful than maybe some of the others um so definitely, you know, if you know, don't feel like that you can't post stuff like that. And if there were anything that you felt a comment was offensive or, you know, didn't adhere to our standards, we would ask that you, you know, definitely report that because we don't want anyone feeling unsafe or like they are, you know, feeling like they can't post, you know, something that is within our platform um, policy. That was a great answer. And I think we'll just wrap it up with one last question that we'll answer from the Q&A. And this was an anonymous question. Um, we got a lot about um, recruiting. So what are the best tips to get a recruiter to notice you of terms to use, your settings, anything else? So, you know, first, like doing all the profile things that we talked about are is a great step because recruiters will look at your profile, probably the first thing they do. So having that information filled out. We also, if you are actively looking for a job, you can put open to work on your profile. So there's a few ways to do that. We have open to work where you can just set that up in the back end on your settings and choose that it's visible to recruiters. Um, we do our best to hide it from your current company. Like it, it'll show you the policy, but you know, we can't hundred percent guarantee, but it's usually just for recruiters outside of your company. If you are looking for a job and you want everyone to know, we actually now have a little uh, profile picture banner that you can add that says um, open to work. It's green. You've probably seen it, um, but that alerts everyone in your network, you know, because obviously it's in your profile picture that you are open to work and it's a great way to get noticed. And also, you know, you never know if one of your connections is going to see it and be like, I have this great opportunity for you but recommend only doing that if you want everyone to know you are open for work, open to work. Christina, thank you so much. And everybody who put those Q and A's in there, you know, that we didn't get to, we are going to have a follow-up. Christina, because she's so wonderful, agreed that she would answer those questions for us. So they will be in the follow-up email along with um, the slide deck that Christina was talking about earlier. And, um, you know, part of what we do at the policy circle, Christina, is just not to inform our members, but to um, equip them with tangible action items. Do you have any final parting words of wisdom for our women? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I know many of you said that you don't actively use it, but encourage you to download the app on your phone and start, you know, just adding it to your routine. And I promise you, you will, It'll be, you know, the next time we do this, it'll all be like, we're power users. We don't need a, a training session. Um, I think you'll get a lot of value and learn from the platform, just from others who inspire you in your network. And that's really our goal. 
I love that. I love the fact that you're you're into the inspiration game because that's, yeah. that's a lot of what the policy circle does. So Christina, yeah. thank you so much. You are wonderful. We appreciate your time and your, your wisdom. So um, we are going to move to the fabulous Nicole Klein because she is going to give us some, some tips for action items. Like I said, knowledge is power, but only when we put it into action. So Nicole, take it away. Yes, thank you, Judy. So thank you again to Christina. So many gems from this conversation. I literally put on my to-do list that I need to go update my profile and check out some of these new tactics and tips um, to get more visibility. So I hope you plan on doing that as well. And as each of you are thinking about how this applies to your civic life, you know, you might be reaching out to legislators, you might be reaching out to city council folks, you might be reaching out to someone in your circle wanting to connect and people look you up, right? So it's really important for you to have a really robust profile. It gives you an instant level of credibility when you reach out to somebody new. So um, the deck will be available. As Judy mentioned, um, any unanswered questions, we will be answering those in the follow-up email. So please be on the lookout for that please connect with the policy circle on LinkedIn. We are on LinkedIn. We do provide fabulous thought leadership content uh, at the intersection of women's leadership and uh, the public policy space. Um, so check out the chat. You'll be able to see a link there where you can follow us today. Um, also, if you're interested in being tagged in any of our posts, message us on LinkedIn. We are looking for people who want to spread the word about our messages and we would love to tag you so that you get informed about any posts that are coming up that you can then uh, share and amplify on your feed. And of course, um, I, this almost goes without saying, but I wanna reiterate, you know, please invest in the policy circle and invest in yourself. Um, today's content is made possible by our financial supporters. And our mission is really to equip women to become better civic leaders in their communities who want to make an impact. And this is the type of programming that you can expect if you're a financial supporter. So I hope you'll, you'll uh, think about that. We do have a number of benefits that start at $100 a year. And there are payment options so you can actually pay on a monthly basis. So please consider that. Check out the link in our chat box for more information there. Um, and please consider investing in yourself and the Policy Circles mission today. And we do have some upcoming events available. So mark your calendars. March is going to be a very busy month for us here at the Policy Circle. Um, so we have March 18th is our next Circle Leadership Series, and it'll be all about overcoming fear and building a thriving circle. So this will be a really inspiring event. I hope you will plan on joining us. Also, our next Move the Needle virtual experience will be the first in a three-part series on free speech. It's a hot topic right now. You will not want to miss this conversation. This first one is all about big tech. Judging by some of the questions in our uh, discussion today, I know that's uh, on top of many of your minds. So definitely don't want to miss that. And then March 26th, we'll actually have a virtual policy circle discussion where everyone will be able to participate. This is exclusively for our financial supporters, and this will be around the free speech conversation and our fabulous uh, membership director, Judy Willard, will be facilitating that conversation. So. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and uh, we hope you'll uh, consider those those call to actions and uh, amplify your LinkedIn profile. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this. We sure enjoyed putting it on for you, and we think you're all fabulous, and keep doing what you do. Be change agents for good in the world. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.